to Fire and Glory Outpouring Night 1846. If you're here tonight in the audience, just come up and join us as we worship the King and we pray. So let's just get right into it. Welcome everyone on the live stream. Send this to your friends if you're listening and let's get started. So Heavenly Father, tonight we welcome you in this place. Holy Spirit, would you fill us afresh with your fire? Thank you for the rains of revival that have been happening here over Vista, California, God. We thank you for the rainbow today that we saw as a reflection of your promises, God, that your promises never fail. And so we just thank you, Jesus, that you rest in this place tonight, that you speak to the inner parts of our heart tonight. Jesus, we need to hear from you tonight. Holy Spirit, would you just flood this place with your presence? Would you flood this place with your atmosphere, with the atmosphere of heaven? Right now, all of heaven, we welcome you here in this place. We welcome you with our praise. We welcome you with our adoration. We love you, Jesus. We give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in this place. We break off the heaviness in this atmosphere tonight. And we welcome the joy of the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord as our strength. Jesus, would you set this atmosphere on fire with your love, your blazing love. As we look into your eyes tonight, would we not be distracted by the things of the world or the things swirling around in our lives right now? Would you just cut off every branch that is not bearing fruit right now in everyone's life tonight, God? And would you give us an eternal perspective to see like you see, God? To see like you see, to feel like you feel, God. If you have your holy language, your heavenly language, lift it up right now to the King. Just let go of every distraction, everything that so easily entangles you right now, and throw it off. Throw it off and throw it in front of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords right now, onto the altar. If you're here, come up to the altar right now. We just welcome you right now to give your all to the King. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Fill us with your heart, God. Give us your desires, God. Strip away every desire that's adverse to your nature, God. We just want you. We want more of you tonight, God. Would you fill this place? We love you, Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. And I just felt like the Lord was talking about tonight, John chapter 15. And I'm just going to read this out. Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have already spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So right now, Jesus, our hearts are to set our heart in front of you right now and abide in you, God. Anything that's not bearing fruit, we give you full permission to remove. We just thank you, God, for your love over our lives. We thank you that you actually discipline those that you love, God. And tonight you're bringing order in our lives. We thank you that you're bringing your loving kindness, Father God, but you're also bringing your hand of order to align and bring everything into order in our lives that may be just out of disorder right now, God. We just love you. We give you everything tonight, God. We fully surrender our hearts tonight, God, in full abandon. 
Yeah, Jesus, we thank you that you are our, the vine. And Lord, we are the branches in that. Father God, you are the vine dresser. And Jesus, I thank you that we are already pruned. We are already clean because of the word that you have spoken over us, oh God. We receive your word with thanksgiving. We receive your word with joy, oh God. God, we receive the word that Tracy spoke last night, oh God. God, we thank you that we get to be in the day and the hour where you're releasing the rains of heaven upon the earth. God, we thank you that not just here in Vista, but it's going to be worldwide. God, I thank you, Lord God, that you told Elijah in the day, go show yourself to Ahab because I'm about to send rain upon the earth. And God, we thank you that, Lord God, we are going to present ourselves before the Ahabs of this world. And that, God, you are going to send rain. You're sending rain. You're sending revival rain into this place, Almighty God. God, we thank you for the floodwaters rising, God. That you're raising the depths, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that we're going to be caught up in the current of your spirit, Lord God. As tides rise in this place, God. Oh, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that we're moving out of the place of Egypt where we have to move and move the dirt with our foot to move the water to where we wanted it. But God, we're moving into the land that's flowing with milk and honey. We're, move, we're moving into the land where you command the rains. God, you command the showers to come, oh, Lord God. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that we're moving from our schemes and our devices and into the realm of the spirit father and god that weird things that were hard are going to become easy in this next hour god oh lord god we god we thank you that healings that maybe had to take two three four five times to pray for and get the lord god they're going to become instantaneously even as the words proceeds from our mouth oh god oh lord god god i thank you that we're moving into that place where we don't have to wait for the manna day after day, but we're moving into the land where there's an abundance of fruit. God, we're moving into the place where we get to occupy houses that we did not build, that we're getting to own vineyards that we did not plant, oh God. God, we thank you that you're bringing us into the place of inheritance. We're coming out of the wilderness and we're coming into inheritance, oh God. Oh Lord, we worship you. We worship you, almighty God. God, we thank you that you are good. And God, we thank you it was never, ever your desire for us to live in the wilderness. But it was always your design to bring us into the land of promise. Oh, Lord, we praise you for that, God. We praise you for that, almighty God. For crossing over that Jordan River and we're coming into the promised land. We glorify you, God. God, we thank you that you're raising up a generation of dread champions. God, the people that will raise up and will be known because of the greatness of their God. Oh, Lord God, and we thank you that you're raising up a people that will cause your dread to go upon all the enemies of the land, oh God. That, Lord God, that they're, that no matter how hard the Jericho walls try to shut themselves in, they're not keeping you out. We praise you for that, oh God. God, we thank you for the victory even before we see it. God, we thank you that you promised over this place, even as Tracy prophesied over last night, God, that Elijah kept his head between the legs and he kept saying to his servant, go, 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 go. That, Lord God, you're raising up this place to send people out, that we're giving the go of the gospel, that we're saying, people, go. All right, people are stepping into this place saying, here I am, Lord, send me, God. That, God, you're raising up people that will be sent out of this place, oh, God. That, Lord God, you're raising up people, Lord God, that are hearing the rain, and that you're going to send the people to see the cloud. We thank you, Lord God. We worship you. We exalt you for that, almighty God. Oh, God, I thank you that you're raising up a new sound of worship in this day, in this hour. God, I thank you that there's new songs, new tones, new musical notes, things that are coming out of the realm of heaven directly out of your heart. And God, I thank you that there's going to be a renaissance coming in the worship movement, oh God, as new sounds are released that transform destinies, that change atmospheres, almighty God, and birth movements in this day, in this hour. We thank you for that, Lord. 
I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. You're pouring out. You're pouring out. God, just as, just as the clouds, Lord, pick up moisture, Lord, and, and the moisture continues to grow and grow and grow and grow until the clouds pour out rain, Lord. We thank you that in the Spirit you are doing the same thing. In the Spirit you are doing the same thing, Lord, that you are pouring out the abundance of rain in this place, God. Lord, as we long for you, you are pouring out the abundance of rain, God. Lord, you're pouring out, God. There was an outpouring, God. There was a transformation happening in this place, Lord, that you are raising up those that will transform this land right now in Jesus' name. Lord, and we come before you. We come before you, God. And we say that we love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We love you with all of our hearts, God. Lord, we love you in the very depths of our hearts, God. Deep cries out to deep. Lord, just, just as we pant for the river, Lord, just as the deer pants for the river, we, de- we pant, we pant, we long for the stream of God. We long for the river of God. We long to experience the depths of your love, Lord. We long to see you face to face, God. You are our oxygen, Lord, we are longing to breathe you in. We are longing to breathe you in. We are longing for you to tear open the ceiling, for you to tear open, Lord, what's above us, God, the ceiling above us, God, and pour out your rain, and pour out your rain. Lord, it's just a, as the speaker last night prophesied, as Tracy prophesied last night that it would rain, Lord. We think as your rain is coming, that you are coming with an outpouring of your spirit like never before, like the world has never seen before, Lord. And I thank you right now that the fear of the Lord is falling on this generation, Lord. The fear of the Lord is falling in this generation, God. Lord, that the fear of the Lord would lead them and not the fear of man. That the fear of man is being broken, God. Lord, even as, as we look at the rainbow, God, even as Todd was saying earlier, Lord, as we look at the rainbow, Lord, God, and we see the seven colors of the rainbow that represent your love being poured out, Lord. Even where we've seen LGBT things that are six colors, Lord, that represents the color of man, we see that the seven colors represents the color of God, the fullness of love, Lord, the complete love, Lord, not a distortion, but a declaration of your love. Every time we see it, to remember what you've done and what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Lord, just as the Israelites, God, in Deuteronomy 8, were crossing over the Jordan, they remembered what the Lord had done. They remembered that you would split the sea. They remembered that you would deliver them from the Egyptians, God. And God, we remember where you've taken us from. We remember where you've taken us from. And as we remember where you've taken us from, we remember where you are taking us. We know where you're taking us. We know we prophesy. We have absolute confidence, absolute faith, Lord, that you are taking us. Lord, into the fullness, Lord, into the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord, that the the next days, the latter days will be greater than the former days, Lord. That we will see the fullness of you, Holy Spirit. That the fire of God is falling on this generation. That the fear of the Lord is falling in this generation. That a radical obedience is falling in this generation. And I'm going to prophesy right now, I thank you, Lord God, that every single person that is meant to be part of Red Church, Lord, every single person, Lord. Lord, that you would speak to every single person, Lord. Lord, and bring them in according to your will. According to your will, Lord, that you would bring, that you would send the right people, that you would send your servants in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would line them up, God. You would line up your army that is being positioned in this place, God. You would line up your army, Lord, and bring them into this place in Jesus' name. You would bring all of the right people that are meant to be the army, the remnant of God, Lord. We thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. And Lord, I've been just right now, I read out of Isaiah 43. And the Lord says, listen, Jacob, to the one who created you, Israel, to the one who shaped you, who you are. Do not fear, for I will rescue you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the deep stormy sea, you can count on me to be there with you. When you pass through the raging rivers, you will not drown. When you walk through persecution like fiery flames, you will not be burned. The flames will not harm you, for I am your Savior, your mighty God. Lord, we thank you that you are our Savior. 
our mighty God, that you are leading a generation, Lord, that will walk in radical obedience, Lord, completely surrendered, radically abandoned to the word of God, to walk in the calling, to walk abandoned to their own ideas, their own thoughts, Lord, and to walk in your thoughts, because your ways, your thoughts are higher, Jesus. Your thoughts are higher, God, and we put down our thoughts. We put down our way of thinking. We have a total reformation of the mind, God, as it says, Lord, in Romans 12, Lord, a total reformation of the mind. So, God, I thank you for a total reformation of the mind tonight, Jesus, that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind, and we walk into the reformation of our mind that you have for us, Lord. Lord, and we come to you and say this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.
you're sovereign. Praise cause you're a praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause. Come on one more time. Hey, hey. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true.
all distress. You're the light that breaks the darkness. You're the mighty one, the risen sun. You're the savior to the drowning. I was lost until you found me. Broke the chains that have bound me. You're the mighty one, the risen sun. You're the father to the fatherless. You're the peace in all distress. You're the light that breaks the darkness. You're the mighty one, the risen sun. You're the savior to the drowning. I was lost till you found me. You broke the chains. gratitude, songs of thanks.
is love, this is love, not that we loved you, but that you loved us first alone. It's your love, oh God, oh, it's your love, oh Lord, it's your love, oh Lord, reach it. my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Deserve the praise, worthy 
Your grace goes on and on, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. desperate praise we give you, Lord. It's a hungry praise we bring tonight. We've tasted of your goodness, and we've tasted of your mercy, and we know it's just you that can save. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone Serve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise.
still in your presence all the noise dies down Lord speak to me now you have all my attention I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing Cause Lord I know my heart wants more my heart wants something new so I surrender
play and wait on the Lord tonight. Linger. Give him your attention. Sit at the feet of Jesus. Sit at the feet of Jesus.
You're the fire and the wind. You're the rain that pours on the thirsty land. And life begins again. You're the promise of the Father. You're the comforter of man. You're the spirit of the grace of God. And how can I begin? To say that I love you, I need you, my closest friend, Holy Spirit, God. I love you, I need you, my closest friend.
everything I need. Oh, Lord. I said I love you. I need you, my closest friend, Holy Spirit, God. We said I love you.
from here. Fix our eyes on Jesus. We lift our eyes on Jesus. We set our hearts and minds on things above. Well, Christ is seated at the right hand, and we've been raised up with Him now, here and now. Lifted high above every enemy, far above principalities, we're lifted up above it all. And you're never shaken, and you're never moved, Aye. you're never intimidated, oh, it's here. trust in you but never be shaken never be shaken oh we take our refuge in you lord we take our refuge in you lord and we give you the highest praise we give you the highest praise because you're worthy Live that tonight. Exalt the King. There's a sweet aroma that's going in front of the throne room, in front of the Father. Keep exalting the living God. I invite you to come to the front. Step forward. Step in. Give praise to the Lord. Pro proclaim His name. Make known among the nations what He has done. Sing to Him praise. To Him tell us all His wonderful acts. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in His strength sick his face always come on there is people here right now seeking the lord with all their hearts with all their might with all their strength come on keep worshiping the god exalting the living king as there's a sweet aroma in front of the throne room of the father he is rejoicing he's being glad because it's a sweet sweet aroma in front of the king we exalt the living God. We exalt you, King, from who you are. We lift up our hands, Lord, in adoration to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords. Thank you, Father.
Lift up your hands. Give him a shout of praise. Come on, give him a shout of praise. He is your name, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Guys, can take a seat back. Come on, praise the Lord. Welcome, everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome, viewers online. Thank you for tuning in. Can we give the worship team a hand, guys? What a phenomenal job. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to night 1846. I have a couple quick announcements. I'll be brief on those. Um, guys, we have some exciting news. Revs Church, guys, this Sunday. Come on. Who's excited for that? Who's coming? Who's inviting somebody? Let's go. Soft launch, March 17th, this Sunday, guys. Get here, 10 a.m., doors open. Get here early. It's going to get packed. Come on. Official launch, we start March 31st, Easter Sunday, guys. It's going to be amazing. Come on, missions 2024. Who's excited? Amen. We have a cup. We have a graphic for that. And it's going to be amazing, guys. We're going on um, four crusades, Mexico, June 24th to July 1st, Peru um, yeah. to be uh, announced. And Pakistan and Nigeria, guys, September 23rd, 30th in the, uh, Pakistan and Nigeria, November 18th to the 25th. Guys, pray. Talk to God. Lord, where do you want me to go? Uh, I'm definitely pulling on Mexico, so. <laughs> Come on, guys. We have the Women of the Spirit Conference. Come on, it's going to be fire. It's, it's going to be amazing. You know, Miranda Nelson, she's been faithful to be hosting this uh, every year. And, man, she just brings a revelatory and knowledge. Just boom. Just bring your um, highlighters, your pens. Bring your Bible and start highlighting because it's just pure knowledge that comes down. And um, knowledge of all of as well. Worship singer just brings the fire of God. And uh, Sherry and I and Krista Smith as well. It's a powerhouse, and it's going to be amazing. So come on down. All ladies only. Men, uh, we probably might be doing something else as well. And um, guys, outreach tomorrow. Yeah. See Todd? Get here, guys. It's going to be amazing. If this is your first time going, um, don't worry. Come and just come in faith, believing that God's going to be doing something in your life and other pe people's life as well. So come on in. Talk to Todd. And it's going to start at 1 p.m. So if not, we'll get you a... Um, with the information and the WhatsApp and what have you. So without further ado, can you help me welcome Jeremy Nelson. Come on. Somebody give Jesus a big shout. I just got sucked up into a portal, and I literally, God just downloaded me. Whoo, I'm still in it. <laughs> 11 messages for Rev Church. Just do, 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 I'm telling you. It's going to blow people's heads off. Like, they ain't even ready for this. Like, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm like, Lord, what are we going to do? Like, you know, this is my first round being pastor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I got it. I'm like, yeah, this is it. Well, actually, you know, last night we, we received the apostolic mail. But, but I'm, I'm excited, though. I just got some crazy downloads. Like, God's going to blow some stuff up. It's going to be good. And, and listen, you're going to blow some stuff up tonight. I busted out the... Uh, Oh, you guys should have been in uh, the Philippines. I literally had, had a sweat rag, and I was doing this, and we must have knocked out a 1,000 people. Like, no joke, just boom, they would go down, under the power. Boom, hit another one, they go down, and they get up. I had an angelic visitation. Boom, hit another guy. He's like, my back's healed. I mean, and it was so funny because I, I, um, you know, I felt bad because the team was doing, like, prayer, but nobody went to the prayer because they were getting knocked out by the, <laughs> by the sweat rag. You know what I'm saying? But... 
Anyway, how many know Paul had handkerchiefs, right? And, and you know, they, they were taken to people that had demons and all kinds of stuff, and they were radically healed. Come on, how many know that's where we're going to get in the United States? Where we're going to see the miracle power of Jesus begin to wreck people everywhere that we go and, uh, and wreck us. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, I want to get wrecked by Jesus. I want to be extra wrecked by Jesus. I want to be so wrecked by Jesus that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, he gets wrecked. You know what I mean? Like, because how many know that you can wreck Jesus if you love him and, and you give him everything and you're just with him all the time? I don't know if you ever had uh, an encounter with Jesus where he, like, revealed to you how much he really loves you. Yeah. Like, like, he gets, uh, ooh, he, he's fierce, I'm telling you right now. He's a lamb and he's a lion, but he's a lion and he's a lamb, but he's also a lover. I, and, and he wants to totally, anyway. Whoo! Well, I'm going to get messed up tonight, so I got to, before I preach all 15 messages. <laughs> Come on, we're going to receive an offering tonight. Listen, you guys, thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, you know, every time that you guys give, we couldn't do what we're doing without you guys and, and host these meetings and preach the gospel of the nations. And I gave a praise report the other, uh, well, last night, you know, I, I talked about how, uh, it, you know, someone just really blessed us. And, and, and you know, we're, uh, they, they, they threw down $40,000 for a crusade. Come on, somebody. And I love that because I was actually like the day before I was like, God, you got to do something because I was talking to our guys in Pakistan and, you know, I was like, Lord, because we've had like zero people give to missions this year as far as like sponsors and, and, and uh, the bigger ones that would usually come in and, and throw down. We've had lots of faithful ones give, though. How many know that's actually how it works, right? It's not just the, the big donors, but it's all the, the little ones put together. That's how we did everything that we've done. And, and I love that because that's kingdom, right? And, and, and at the same time, we welcome the ones that want to sponsor entire crusades because it really does help. And, uh, and so we're, we're blessed you know, and, and thankful for that. And uh, I, I was just so excited because I was talking to Sir Fraz, a guy in Pakistan. He's like, hey, listen, man, I, I want to need you to send you know, some, some money for everything like here soon. And I was like, yeah, bro, I'll just act like we had it. I'm like, yeah, bro, we're going to send it. It's coming. Uh, you know, I was like, I can't wait to come to Pakistan. How many know then I went home? God help. <laughs> Anybody ever done that? You know what I mean? Like you're like, you said God. You know, and then later he gives it to you and you're like, I, I, thank you. You know what I mean? And you get wrecked. And so anyway, I'm just sharing a praise report. God is so good. But uh, if you guys want to sew tonight, go for it. We'll bring these baskets up. And, you know, I was sharing last night that God's going to release a breakthrough to those that press into him and those that hear his voice. How I many know that's how it works, right? Intimacy with God, obedience to his voice, releases a manifestation of his kingdom. And when we do um, the obedience lifestyle, I'm telling you, the heavens open and God just pours out his spirit. And so uh, just pray and obey. Be radically obedient to God tonight. Those of you watching online, uh, you can do the same. There is a giving slide that will come up and tell you how to do that. Um, a million is spelled M-I-L. I'm still, we're believing for it. You know what I mean? Like, We'd pay for all crusades at once for this year and next year. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, pray, obey, come up whenever you're ready, you guys. We're going to make some decrees over the seed that we're sowing tonight. And I believe God's going to multiply it back to givers and to sowers and, and not just the ones given uh, in this place, but even online. And so take a moment and do your thing. Uh, if you need an envelope, they're in front of your chairs. E-Rev, you can write the checks out too. Uh, give responsibly. Don't be dumb. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I tell people that sometimes. Uh, you know, people would like some ministries are like by faith, write a write a, a debt for yourselves. We don't do that around here. If you do that, that's on you. That's uh, that spirit of stupid. We want you to come on, somebody. How many know you want to steward what you have, not what you don't have? And I'm just being real because I've I've just I heard a couple stories lately, and I was like, what? Like, why would people do that? You know what I mean? Because they got manipulated to do that. Ooh, all right, we won't go there. See, that'll be for Rev Church when I teach, you know, I'll teach people on giving instead one of these years. Uh, and, and so uh, I'm excited. Come whenever you're ready. I, I can feel it. it's going to be a revelation night. Like, I can't stop flowing, so come. <laughs> it's going to bubble. Uh.
every seed sown tonight, Lord, those that are giving in this place, those that are giving online, we ask you to multiply it back, Lord God. Let that release of heaven on earth come, Father. And Lord, we just thank you, God, that, Lord, we can't outgive you because you own the cattle on a thousand hills, Lord. You have a treasury that's way bigger than any banking system of this earth. And Lord, I thank you, God, that, Lord, no weapon formed against your people can prosper. No tongue that's that's spoken against them can prevail. We just bind it now and we release breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said? Amen. It was funny. When I was praying for that, I started seeing these word curses over people. And where, uh, where people had either themselves cursed their finances or someone else had cursed their finances. And I saw the Lord just break those words. Boom. Just, just shatter the words right off of people. And, and I'm telling you that, you know, one, one shattered curse can, can shift everything. And, and, and you know, uh, sometimes it's not because there's a witch. Sometimes it's because you're just being mean to yourself. Come on, somebody. Somebody like, what you mean? What I mean is don't prophesy over yourself a negative thing. Right? How many know that words have power? And those words uh, will either make or break us. And I want to just say this is that God's about to give us an anointing to watch our mouths. Woo! Come on, somebody. And I, 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 I'm preaching on that tonight, but that's a word. Some of y'all need to watch your mouth. You know what I mean? But, but here's, here's the deal, though. I, I, I was seeing all these angels in the realm of the Spirit tonight, especially when we were just in that uh, last part of the worship. And even in the offering, I saw all this stirring going on in heaven, like all oh, the stirring of the heavenly hosts. And I'm telling you, God is about to release something in this place tonight. And he's about to release something in this region. Come on, somebody. And I I really believe that God wants us to steward the kingdom of God like never before. And part of stewarding the kingdom of God is is partnering with heaven to do the things of heaven. And you know what God wants to do? He wants to teach us how to tap into the unseen realm, but also into the angelic realm. Because when we begin to tap into heaven's help, come on, everything uh, shifts and things become easier. Breakthrough happens. I mean, listen, you could war the devil all by yourself or you could sit back and worship God. And you can allow the the heavenly realm to war on your behalf. Come on, somebody. I mean, some people, man, they're operating out of they're they're operating out of just the lowest warfare there is, which is their gifting. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna fight the devil, man. You're dumb. Don't fight the devil. Just go after Jesus. Because if you go after Jesus, he'll fight the devil for you. You know how many times I've been in a meeting or or I've been in a mass crusade or I've been somewhere where there was demonic. Now I'm talking like, I'm not even just saying like, oh, there was a demonic spirit. No, there was principalities that were there that wanted to do something, but they couldn't do nothing. Because the same God who shut the mouths of the lions when it came to Daniel, when he was thrown into the lion's den, how did he do that? Angels! That same, uh, the, the same God that we serve, the God of the angel armies, come on, Jesus Christ. How many know that he has uh, legions of angels that he wants to release on our behalves? And I'm telling you, Jesus, he, he demonstrated to uh, you know, his disciples uh, really what kind of authority you can have as an individual. Yes, he was the son of God when he was on the earth, but he did every miracle. He did every feat that he did as a human uh, that was fully submitted to the Holy Ghost and the voice of his Father. And he did that because if he would have done it any other way, he would have spoiled it for you and I. I mean, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to lay aside his deity, but it says that he humbled himself uh, by becoming obedient to the cross. See, I want to just say this. What does real humility look like? Obedience. But you know what I love, though, is, is this, is that when they came to take Jesus, you know, I mean, we watch the, uh, the, the movies that people have made in the past. It'll be interesting to see how the, uh, how the Chosen puts it out there. I, I like watching those movies. And, and you know, then probably, I'm not saying they got it perfect, but I like when the Bible comes alive in front of my eyes. But I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of it. I love, I love those movies and, and, or the TV shows. But, uh, you know, I'm curious to see how they make it when, uh, you know, when Jesus gets betrayed and he gets arrested because... You know, the, the Bible is really clear of, of how much authority Jesus has because when Judas comes and lays the kiss of deceit on him and he, and he you know, deceives, he's deceived by Satan and he turns him over to the high priests and, you know, the, the Pharisees and even the, the Roman law. How many of you know that they go, are you Jesus of Nazareth? And he goes,
goes, I am. And the Bible says they all fell to the ground. Boom. You know what happened? A couple, a couple thousand angels are like, who do these fools think they are? You know what I mean? Like, come against the Son of God. And he's like, I am. Oh, get down. Boom. You know what I mean? And, and you know what's funny is Peter goes all like Rambo. You know what I'm saying? Like, he gets crazy. He, he tries to chop the, the dude's head off, right? He goes running after the, the guy, and he goes, and he chops his ear off. And, and Jesus is like, Peter, what you doing? He's like, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. And he takes the guy's ear and puts it back on. I mean, like, that, that's crazy, right? Some people are like, man, you know, Peter cut that dude's ear. He was trying to cut his head off. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens when you got a, uh, when you got a fisherman trying to swing a sword. You know what I mean? He didn't know what he's doing, but he was defending Jesus. And Jesus rebuked him. He said, listen, man. He said, if you live by the flesh, you're going to die by the flesh. How many know the battle that needed to be won was not a battle of the natural? Because Jesus goes on and he tells his, his disciples one of the last things he tells them before he's crucified. He goes, do you all not think that I can't call upon heaven and my father wouldn't send legions of angels? Whew, come on, somebody. See, Jesus knew who he was. In such a powerful way, in such a secure way, his identity was set in the Father's love for him. And part of that love is he understood that because God loves him, he sent angels. And not only would he send angels, but he could have access to the angels. He could have access to the heavenly dimension. Now, I want to just say this. We don't order angels around. We don't, we don't tell angels what to do. I mean, it says in Psalm 103, 20, if you look at Psalm 103, 20 through you know, 23, it says that the angels of God excel in strength. And it says they watch over his word to perform it. So how do the angels of God you know, move and, and do what they do on the earth? They do it to perform the word of the Lord. So if you want angelic activity in your home, if you want angelic activity in your life, if you want angelic activity in your church or wherever you're watching from tonight, even your in your house or your living room, then you better just you know get with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but you better get a revelation of the fact that God has released that provision for you. And you can ask him because uh, he's a good father. Psalm uh, you know, 34, 7 says the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who fear him. I mean, you, you got to understand that the, the one thing that will attract the angelic realm to your life is the fear of the Lord. And it's because the fear of the Lord is clean. Come on, somebody. The fear of the Lord is clean, but the fear of the Lord is holy. But also when the angelic realm sees someone that's on fire for God, they're attracted to God who's inside of them. And it's not that they're attracted to you, but they're attracted to the kingdom of God. And, and see, I, I want to just say this. The more you go after God, the more on fire you are, the more the angelic realm will start to move in your midst. And I'm not just talking about preaching. I'm not just talking about teaching. I'm not talking about at church. I'm talking about at school, at work. I'm talking about wherever you go, wherever you're in your car. Come on. You can, if there's a, an accident on the side of the road, you can deploy the angels. You can deploy the angels. Lord, I thank you, God, right now. Nobody dies, Lord, especially nobody that doesn't know you yet. We just decree resurrection power. Lord, release the angels. Come on, somebody. See, we don't know what our prayers are releasing and dispatching when we pray like that. And see, God wants to take us into a place where we understand that we have an inheritance in, in Christ Jesus. And that inheritance is the same relationship that he had on earth with his father. We can have through intimacy and through pushing into him and reading his word and, and discovering what the word of God says our inheritance is. And then also, you guys, you got to understand something. God anoints us. To live in the supernatural. I meet people all the time that trip out because I, I, I'll be real. Like, I don't know. I don't try to live in the supernatural. I just live in the supernatural. And everywhere I go, supernatural things happen whether I'm trying or not. I will sit with people and have coffee. And while I'm talking about a certain thing, a truck will drive by with the very thing I'm talking about. And like, well, did you see that? I go, yeah. I'm, I'm like, of course. You know, I'm, I'm used to it. I've, it's been happening since I got saved. 
You know, and, and, and you know, I'll, I'll start telling people stuff. And I remember it was like two years ago, you know, we were doing a, a meeting of fire and glory like this. And I went to an open vision and I saw these meteor showers happening and all this stuff. And I began to prophesy and it was like October. And I said, listen, the Lord says in the middle of January, you're going to see in the front pages of the newspaper and even in headlines that, that there's a, a meteor showers that have come down. And it's a sign. I started prophesying about Acts chapter two and all this stuff. And it was it was interesting because the one guy who pays attention to that stuff the most if you if you don't know is Andrew and Andrew I was on the golf course with Sammy just hit a tee off and then all of a sudden I get a little ding and, and Andrew's like bro look the prophecy happened and I look and it's the very first thing that, that come up that morning in the paper about meteor showers coming down and all these things and, and and you know it's interesting because God wants to give us supernatural intel he wants to give us divine uh, uh, instruction, divine intelligence. People got different names for it. I just say wisdom. Come on. And when you got wisdom on your life, you will see things that other people don't see. When you have wisdom on your life, you will move in things that other people won't move in. And you won't even have to strive to do it, man. You'll just be chilling and all of a sudden God will show up. And I mean, listen, when God shows up, it, it don't matter where you are. If you have a listening ear, he will speak to you. I've gotten more stuff from God when I was actually talking to someone and I was like, I, I felt bad because I was checked out on him. <laughs> and he's like speaking to me because he's speaking to me about them. You know what I mean? They're like telling me this whole thing, man, it was so cool. We went down to Australia and, I, you know, and I'm just like, eh, eh, you know, I'm, I'm shaking my head. I don't know what you just said, but God just showed me your whole life. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I need to prophesy to you now. And uh, listen, God wants you to be like an antenna that, you know, you're receiving the, the waves of his glory. Because how many you know, just like uh, an old school TV set, the waves, uh, you know, uh, would, would be coming down. And if you had antennas, you could pick up what was being released in the unseen, right? And so God. God wants us to have our spiritual antennas in tune so we can pick up the things that are in the unseen realm. And sometimes it's the angelic realm. And I'll tell you what, you be a dummy to worship an angel. How many know John fell down at the feet of an angel in Revelation 19, 10, right? And the angel rebuked him. He said, get up. He said, don't worship me. Worship God. I'm just a fellow servant of yours in the kingdom. And, and he said, worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See, if you want to know what the angels live to do, they live to release the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus. And when you begin to testify of Jesus, the angelic realm gets released. When you begin to decree the word of God in faith and you begin to declare the kingdom, then, then heaven comes. And it's impossible for heaven not to come, but it's very possible that you might not see it or, or you might miss it. See, because when you start praying in the spirit, more is happening than what you think. Stuff is getting stirred up. Things are getting shifted. Uh, when we start to intercede, oh, that's when the angels really begin to stir. The other night when we just got caught last Saturday, I think, or Friday, one of the nights, we just got caught in massive intercession. You remember that? And I'll tell you what, the angels of God, by, by the thousands, were being released out of this place. And they were just being launched all over the earth with fire. And I'm telling you, that when we pray like that as a church, I don't think we realize the significance. We think, you know, like, man, that person is really good at praying. You know, and it's like, no, no, there's about, you know, a couple thousand legions got released. You know what I'm saying? You know, what's interesting is Jesus said that, you know, do not think I could have called on my father for a legion of angels. You know, what's interesting about that is that's 800 angels. That's 800 or, or in some of the different ones they call battalions of angels. And it's actually a Roman term. And if you look at it, a centurion would have a battalion of soldiers under him. 800 soldiers that he was over. Uh, and, and so what was Jesus saying? He's like, what? You, you don't, he was speaking their language. They understood that. He goes, you don't think I couldn't call on 800 angels with just one cry to my father? Whew. See, next time you're feeling craziness happening next time you're feeling darkness in your living room or in your house or you got warfare come on just just ask god for a, a battalion it'll crush that boom, boom, boom. you know what i'm saying like people well, i'm not jesus well i didn't say you were jesus thank god you're not jesus you know what i mean but what i'm saying is jesus lives in you and the word of god should be in you and when the holy spirit inspires you can make decrees to shift things 
And, and, and I'm telling you that God wants to open up the heavens. Woo, I, I'm telling you, I got a download today when I was sitting right there. This kind of stuff is what we're going to throw down on at Rev Church. You watch. It, it, it will be the most revelatory ter- church that, that you can find around here because God just told me what to do. I, I saw it. There, uh, listen, there's about to be a kingdom people that rise up, not just in, you know, having fun jumping around, but actually manifest the kingdom. Everywhere they go, they're, they're, they're well equipped for the, the things that God is about to release in this next season. Because here's the deal. A lot of people are not. They're playing patty cakes. Come on, somebody. You know what I mean? They're, they're sitting around. They, they got their youth eating pizza and playing video games. Listen, are you? They're going to be prophesying, moving to miracles, releasing the kingdom, casting out demons. We don't have to tell them to calm down. Like, okay, guys, the witch, all the devils came out of her. Just, it's enough. You know, fill her up with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm telling you, Tracy was prophesying over here over these guys. He didn't even, he didn't even know they were our youth pastors. <laughs> See, I, I, but I love when we have prophets in the house. See, God's, God's about to release a holy stirring in a generation to where all of a sudden we go from a place of nomads and, and wanderers to an army that's equipped. To an army that's equipped, trained, and ruling and reigning with Jesus instead of just like, you know, talking about, you know, this and that. And I'm telling you, God wants to release a, a war against inaction in the church. And he wants to raise up a generation of supernatural uh, faith who's going to see so much action. It's going to flip their cities upside down. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> So look at this. Uh, In John chapter 1, verse 47 through uh, 51, it says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe you will see greater things than this? Uh, He said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. Come on, somebody. You know what Jesus promised The church right there, an open heaven. He said, oh, you're impressed because I got a word of knowledge about where you pray, right? Philip, if you go to the very beginning of that chapter, you know, Philip goes and and he he finds Nathaniel and he goes, hey, Nathaniel, we found the savior of the world, right? He's like telling him, you know, he's a a Galilean, you know, a Nazarene. And he's like, what can anything good come out of out of there? Are we sure? You know, he's, he's over there like, man, I don't know. And then as soon as he comes into contact with Jesus, Jesus looks at him and says, when I saw you under the fig tree. I mean, he gets wrecked, right? And, and all of a sudden he goes, you are the savior of the world. And Jesus goes, you believe because of one word of knowledge? He goes, just wait till you start getting information from heaven like I'm getting information from heaven. He's like, you know, all it is is the angelic realm. It's ascending and descending upon who? The Son of Man. And he, what he's really saying is, wait till I die on the cross. Uh, you know, looking at Philip, looking at Nathaniel. Wait till I die on the cross, boys. Because when I make my home in your heart, listen, the heavens are going to open over your life. And the angels of God are going to ascend and descend upon you. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. See, you're more dangerous than what you think. You are. See, we should be disruptors of darkness. We should be disruptors of darkness that wherever we go, darkness can't even operate, man. They're just like, this ain't fair. Why you show up? You know what I mean? Like, cause, and that's the way it works. I mean, listen, I know that's the way it works because they're in the back of our crusades with sticks, you know, trying to curse us. And I'm laughing. I'm going, dude, whatever, bro. Like, you don't even know what you are trying to challenge right now. I'm like, my eyes are open. I see the hundred thousand angels that are here and you ain't doing nothing. And by the way, all your demons that are all over these people, you're all coming off. I'm like, you're, you're coming off and you're coming out because we're going to have a deliverance service tonight with 50,000 people. You know, but most people would be, oh, you know, just be careful when you go over there to Africa. Now you better be actually. But what I'm saying is, come on, if you're always aware of the devil more than you are of Jesus in you, upon you, and with you, then you're in trouble. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to react to what the devil's doing. Come on, I'm going to respond to what my daddy's doing. I'm going to respond to what my father's saying, what my father's showing me, where my father's telling me to go. Because when I respond to the word of the Lord, heaven shows up. Whoo! I mean, no, response, it doesn't mean that it feels good. <laughs> How many know that response doesn't mean that you know everything? How many know that response doesn't mean, listen, when I was a little kid and I was not responding to my mom and she grabbed the remote control and went like this, I responded. I'm telling you. I responded real quick. You know what I'm saying? I got all my other friends, oh, the chocolate. No, she had a remote control and it was like a boomerang, man. But you know what, though? See, God's looking for some people that would respond to the word of the Lord and not run from it and get hit by it. You know what I mean? Then that's the only reason why you're doing it is because God, come on, you know what I'm talking about. I'm meeting some people, man, that they're having a hard time with the shift we're coming in. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to let religion go. You know, it's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, man, why didn't you just stay in outpouring? We are staying in outpouring, but we also going to build the church. Come on, somebody. And, and, and you got to understand, there's a reason why, because we can do both. You know what I'm saying? We can gather people regionally. We can bring people in here. We can bring speakers in. We can, we can light a generation up, but we can also build a stronghold of the kingdom of God in a region that eventually nations and places start coming to to get what they call impartation and activation. We already have that, but it's even more, though, when the kids are the anointed ones. Come on. When, when, when the young people are going out and they're flipping in and out, upside down in the middle of the night. Come on. Woo. We're going to have revival in every sector of society, and no one's going to stop it. Because we're just going to raise up people that are too on fire. And they, t- they know too much. They're like, nah, you could try to stop me, Satan, but the angels are with me tonight. And you know what? You could look at me like that all you want. But you're going to have to find a new dude, you know? See, that, that's, that's where we need dread champions. The, the, the devil is afraid of them. They're not afraid of the devil. When they show up, the devil goes, no. You know what I mean? Like, I, I meet some people that are f- they're afraid of doing the will of God. They're, Man, every time I do something for God, the devil attacks. Well, change your mindset. You know what I'm saying? If it, it must be miserable to be living well, conscious of the demons all day. I'm just going to be real with you. Like, I don't think about the devil ever, man. Whew, I, like, I don't think about him at all. I'm like, I'm too busy for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got my mind on the things of, of the kingdom. I got my mind on my wife. I got my mind on, uh, you know, what we're doing uh, for, for God and the earth. And I got my mind on just having a, a good time with my friends. <laughs> And you know what? When the devil pops up, I'm going to deal with him. He will. He'll pop up. But there's a, there's a difference, though, right? Between leaving him on your screen and, come on, how many know when them dumb ads pop up? You know, you just click it, you keep, nope, and it goes away, right? Some people, they just open them all, and they're like, the devil's right there. I'm like, shut the screens. Get him off your radar. You know what I'm talking about? So you got to understand that in the spirit realm, God wants to release heaven's help in our lives so that we can walk with him, talk with him. We can move with him. We can sing with him. We can worship. We can decree with him. We can pray with him. I mean, there's a great difference between prayer that's a chore. That's an obligation. Prayer because, oh, pastor said I got to do it. Or, or, you know, my my mom said, you know, and it's like, I don't want to do it. And I'm so on fire that I can't help but pray. See, that's my problem. I, I'm, I'll be talking to the waiter at the, <laughs> I prayed for you know, two hours walking around my neighborhood, and then I go into Chipotle to get some tacos, and they're like, what would you like? I'm like, shaka, robo, cote, ata. They're like, excuse me? I'm like, whoops, I mean, I'll take some carne asada tacos. You know, and seriously. And it's like, I'm praying more in the spirit than I am in English. And you got to understand, how do we stir up the realm of the Spirit? We pray in the Spirit. And you know what? Sometimes that's with words of understanding that you know or things that are being inspired by the Holy Ghost. And sometimes it's just praying in the Spirit. Just praying. Just going for it. Just, just shaka broko te adadasha. There's a reason why there's warfare from the devil and warfare from the Pharisees against tongues. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be. Could you imagine coming before Jesus on the day of judgment? Some guy follows, some guy goes before you, you're watching, 
And he's like, well done, good and faithful servant. You, you built a massive movement for me on the earth. And then he comes, you're like, oh yeah, Lord, I did everything. He's like, um, you raised up nine million Pharisees that fought against the Holy Spirit. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be that guy. That, that'd be a scary day. Like, <laughs> sorry, Lord. Oh, wait, you're dead already, so you can't really repent, right? That's why it's the day of judgment. Uh oh. Right? Uh, what do you mean? Like, uh, I was doing your will. No, you was doing your will. <laughs> See, because religious ways of thinking and behaving are always self focused. You know why God's not showing up? Because they're too self focused. They're too, too, too focused on their own stuff and everybody's stuff. And I mean, listen, God's about to set some people free so much so that you probably should care, but you won't. You know, you're going to be laughing your heads off and getting filled with joy. And the angels are going to start moving in your workplace. And people are going to try to, uh, you know, uh, figure things out. And you're going to be like, yeah, I got an explanation. <laughs> you know. Come on, we're about to give the world some encounters. How many know we owe it to the world to give them supernatural encounters? You know what I'm saying? Like some people, man, they, they think God has called them to give people religion. Are you, are you crazy? I don't want to give nobody religion. Come on, man. I want people to encounter the same freedom that set me free from porn, the same freedom that set me free from alcohol, the same freedom that set me free from drugs, the same freedom that set me free from me. Come on, somebody. And, and I mean, you, you, you got to understand there's a lot of people acting like they're set free from a lot of stuff, but it's just, it's like a declaration. I'm free, but they're in it. You know why? Because they don't have an awareness of heaven. They don't have an awareness of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And you got to understand, Jesus told these guys, wait till I die and I raise again for the dead and make my home in your heart. You're going you're gonna to have the heavens wide open over you and the angels of God are going to ascend and descend from the throne. I mean, you, I can, I'll be in worship sitting on the front row because I'm a seer and I'm, I'm just going, Shh, and I, I'm waiting. And I always, uh, the Lord will go, open your eyes. And I see, and I'll see like all these angels start to, come into the room and when they come they fall face down and I'm telling you it happens quite a bit actually and, and what's interesting about it is I already know what that means it means that he's coming because he is the God of the angel armies and there is not a king on the earth that would be escorted to any nation or any place or any church or anywhere without an army protecting and he doesn't need the protection it's just a protocol they always go out in front. And what they're really doing is they're clearing the demonic realm out because the demonic ain't worthy of being in his presence. See, when we start to learn how to worship God like they worship in heaven. So that's something that I think is amazing about this place. See, some people think heaven will come because of their gifting or their creativity or their entertainment skills. They think heaven will come because they, they, they have a, a certain sound on their voice or whatever it is. And you got to understand that, that you might move the souls of people, but their spirit stays dry as a bone. And if they don't know how to move God, then they're not going to get none of God if you're in a place like that. But you got to understand when you have worship leaders submitted to the Holy Ghost and they start to flow. That's what I love about this outpouring is, man, we, I, there's no robotics going on up in here. You know what I'm saying? It's just Holy Ghost and, and, and the flow comes and it hits and we let it roll and we let it have, uh, you know, the, the, the spirit of God have preeminence and, and the angels start to come. And when I see those angels come, it always happens. God will open my eyes right before glory comes because the king of glory, when he shows up, come on, let me know it says in Psalm 24. Lift up your heads oh you ancient gates, right? That the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty, right? God of the angel armies. Oh. See our praise breaks open the gates and releases the heavenly dimension. And that's why the devil don't like spirit led praise. You know what I'm saying? Or that, that, that's why religious people don't like spirit-led praise. They're like, it's too long. It's too loud. It's too this. It's too that. Man, be quiet and receive. We need you to get delivered of that. Because right now you just got a spirit of grumpy on you. <laughs> 
See, some people that I want joy, well, then get it. And you know why the angels come? Boom. is because we're not actually, I don't know if you guys get this, but I think some people actually think that uh, we're, we're in here like, and we're just singing to heaven. What is it, like a big, hello, hello, hello. God, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? You know, like, that's how some people are praising and some people are praying. You know what I mean? But you got to understand, when we start to worship and we start to praise, the, the entire atmosphere changes because we're not praising to him. We're praising with all of heaven. Heaven invades earth. Earth and, and heaven synchronize in the same moment where we're worshiping and we're lifting high praise. The angels come down. They're all over the room. They're joining with us with hallelujahs. And I mean, it's more than what we think, you guys. Some people just, it's about a song lesson getting paid. I'm telling you, if that's your heart, get out of worship. Because it's not what it's about. It's about bringing glory to the king. And when we begin to bring glory to the king and we begin to lean into his presence and we begin to let the, the, the move of God happen through us, it starts touching the lives of others. And, and, and heaven invades earth. And, and when heaven invades earth, it's not a cliche term. It's, it, listen, heaven is invading earth. If you've ever heard me say that, oh, the lion of the tribe of Judah is here, I'm serious. You might think I'm like metaphorically speaking. No! <laughs> Religious people don't like that. How can that be? Well, Jesus said, pray that heaven would invade earth. So if heaven invades earth and the lion's there, then he comes here, then what's the deal, right? But that's just too simple a faith. No, that's just called faith. See, God, God wants to break doubt. He wants to break Shame. He wants to break performance. You know, some people just, they, they want to do something for it. <laughs> they want to do something for it. Whew, I'm telling you, the other day I was praying in the back room over here and uh, in my office. And I was in there for, for a while just worshiping. And uh, <laughs> one of my friends, you know, he was, he's coming and he said, yo, I'm going to come by. I said, all right, man, come in. And he come in. I didn't even hear him come in. And I look over at him. He's He's getting smacked. He's like, bro, it's crazy oily up in here. Like, what is this? You know, like, man, you got it rolling. And, and I know he does the same thing at his house. But sometimes you can be surprised by an atmosphere. You come in and you're, whoa, what was that? That's something that was cultivated. That's not just cold turkey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, but we can cultivate realms of the supernatural. We can cultivate realms of healing power, realms of, of signs and wonders and miracles. And, and really, it's the anointing of God. And when the anointing rests on you, listen, there is no limitation to what he can do. Whew. You know, sometimes I, God will show me who's in sin and who's not in sin by showing me their angels. Some of you are like, wait, what? I'm being serious. Because if I can see your angels... I know how much you've been praying. Because everything that's connected to our, our hearts and lives is connected to the realm of the Spirit, too. And so you have to understand that if you're living in compromise and you're living in sin and shame and the, the devil's beating you up and, and, and you're not getting set free, then here's what will happen in the realm of the Spirit. Your angels look beat up. They got a black eye and a, a cracked armor and a sword that's chipped. And, 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 you know, and what it tells me is that someone has an open door in the realm of the Spirit that's giving the enemy permission to attack them. And the, the angels working overtime to try to stop the attack. But because of the open door... There's a, there's a, a, a war that's, that's in some ways being lost. But, but when someone's on fire, listen, everything connected to them in God is, is full of light. It's shining. The angelic realm is powerful. And now listen, we don't worship angels. We worship Jesus, but we don't ignore them. And you got to understand, I can meet someone and, and, and the anointing on their life. And, you know, the new age should be like, oh, look at their aura. Man, ain't no aura. That's the anointing of God. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, y'all don't even know what you're talking about, aura. <laughs> I'll be like... That's called, that's called Jesus. But, but you got to understand, when someone's on fire, their angels are on fire. They're, they're empowered to the greatest level to, to, to totally serve the kingdom of God in their life and to protect them and to, to release breakthrough wherever they go. 
Now, I'm not talking doctrine tonight. This is what I see in the Spirit sometimes. And you know what? Here's the deal. I'm not looking around for people's angels. It just happens sometimes. And a lot of times it's because God wants me to know stuff about people. See, when you discern, it's, it's different with everybody else. You might be discerning the same thing. You didn't see an angel. You just had a bad feeling about it. I don't know about them. But what you're feeling is the atmosphere around them is off. You know what I'm saying? The atmosphere around them is off and, and, and something's not right. And, and so God wants to teach us how to discern. Whoo, he wants to teach. Listen, this is this okay, you guys? See, because I'm, I'm just, uh, honestly, like, uh, I, I just feel like the, the Lord wants to talk about this stuff because if we don't, we're not going to be equipped for what's ahead. We're about to see gross darkness on the earth. You know what I mean? We've seen some crazy stuff, but there's even more coming. You know, and, and, and God wants us to begin to understand that the Bible says in Isaiah 60, Your eyes shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And when deep darkness covers the earth and the people, God's glory will be seen on the church. You know, it's funny. So I got a text today and, uh, from Sid Ross, guys, and he's like, Hey, your, your, episode, your new episode's coming out on Monday. You know what we talked about? We talked about how God wants to turn He wants to turn riots into revivals and demonstrations into reformations. And I had an encounter with Jesus when I was in Zimbabwe, and we were there over uh, you know the the Rosh Hashanah season, and even uh, an encounter that I had with uh, Yom Kippur and all of these things. And so we shared it on his program. And and you got to understand, you guys, that the, the the whole world is ready for revival, and a lot of them just don't even know it. A lot of them don't even know Jesus yet. I can't wait to see how many people get saved through Rev Church. You watch. You know, the Lord told me, he said, there'll be so many people that can't put them in here because you're going to win so many people that they can't stay in there. He told me that. He said, you just watch. The people that want to just watch, they won't even have a seat because there'll be too many people getting discipled. Huh. See, because you got to understand, all the people we see saved on our outreaches, we've been like, okay, yeah, God bless you. Like, come to the outpouring. They don't have a grid for that. We do because revival's for the church. Revivals for the church. Re revival revives the hearts of the church, cause them to be set on fire and so they can go out and they can bring the kingdom. But when people get saved, they need discipled. Ooh, some of y'all are going to be the disciplers. See, because there's an army of disciplers that God's going to raise up, just like the, the prophet was prophesying last night. Come on. He was saying that there's, a, there's an apostolic go that's being released, an apostolic anointing to commission and release people. Oh. See, I'm excited about that. You know, but some people just want to be entertained. That's, that's the thing. I, I just want to see Jesus exalted whoo, and, and just absolutely crush Satan under his feet. Oh, whoo, Ebo. <laughs> There's a devil crusher right there. He's like... <laughs> Slap the devil so hard tonight that his minions were all feeling it. <laughs> See, but heaven's help. Do you ask God for heaven's help? I do all the time. Some people are like, like, what do you mean ask for heaven's help? Well, just I'm aware that God is for me, so who can be against me? But part of that is understanding who's with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got one vision, one snapshot picture of the angels of God that he assigned to your life to protect you, you wouldn't be afraid of the devil ever again. You know, and I think some of you are like, I got a little tiny baby angel. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's barely got any authority. You have no clue. Like, you got angels been protecting you since you were born. <laughs> and you know what? They're, they're, they're no little guys. They're... Do you know your angels look like you too? Some of them. Uh, Acts chapter 12. Peter stands at the door, knocks at the house after he's released out of prison. The servant girl wrote her open, slams the door on his face, goes to the back. God did it. He answered our prayers. He's like, nah, nah, that's just his angel. Wait, what? We'd really have to pray if that was true. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, put your hands out. 
sure come on. See, but but here's here's the deal though. It's it's really not about angels or the spirit realm or all these things. It's about Jesus. And when we seek his heart and we seek his face, come on, that's that's when the acceleration comes. That's when you get caught in the whirlwind. That's when all of a sudden you start to see things and know things and you start to prophesy things that there's no way you would ever know and that you could ever pull off on your own, but it just starts to flow out of you. That's how the prophetic works. I think sometimes we, we, we think it's so mystical. Sometimes you're just opening your big fat mouth and you're bold enough to let God speak. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Ah. Woo. Uh-huh. Come on up there, Andrew. I know your devil smacking hands just cooled down, but we need them again. <laughs> so you got to understand Psalms 91. 11 through 12 tells us that God assigns his angels to keep us away from harm's way. But also, did you know that in Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, it says this. It says, take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven. Did you know that little kids have angels assigned to them? And the father's checking in with the angels to see how the kids are doing every day. That's what Jesus is saying. Why do you think Jesus was like, hey, if you want to enter the kingdom, you got to be like one of these. You ever seen kids play with their imaginary friends? You know, you're like, who is what, what? My mom told me I used to do that all the time. You know what? It was the angels. How do you know it's an angel? Because they weren't freaked out by it and screaming. Come on. That's called a demon. (laughs) Kids can see that too. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to equip kids so that don't scare them. They'll just rebuke the devil. Yeah. Yeah. I I had a testimony the other day. One of the gals that comes here all the time to Fire and Glory and her little boy just... You know, for the last few years, been running around the back with trucks and, you know, all kinds of stuff. She said, the other night, I got up in the middle of the night, and he was standing in the bed. And he's like this big. And he, he rebuked a snake. Snake, you go in Jesus' name. And she's like, is he rebuking the devil? And he told his mom, snake gone. <laughs> and laid down. See, that's a different testimony than I had growing up. I was tortured by nightmares when I was a kid because I was a seer. The devil knew my calling and the prophetic and tried to shut it down by attacking it. But see, we didn't have the knowledge. My parents didn't. My mom wasn't saved. My dad wasn't saved. Well, No one knew nothing about the spirit. <laughs> I didn't actually get a mama that was on fire till I was like 13 when she got healed and set free. And so as a kid, I didn't have the tools to understand how to deal with that demonic stuff. See, that's why we got to have rev kids. We're going to raise up a whole generation. Snake go. Just wait till you tweak it a little bit in their hearts and they go, cancer, go. Come on, on, somebody. (laughs) You know, and then wait till they they learn their faith and you're whining about how you can't pay your bills and they they grab your leg and go, finance, come. (laughs) Serious. See, I'm I'm being real here. We're going to create a culture. (laughs) because <laughs> if you just give kids pizza and entertain them then when the snakes come they're going to scream right what if we even teach them that their angels see the father every day and then they can go okay I got angels that see father every day I wonder what the father told them about me 
See, you start teaching them like that. I ain't even the children's pastor. I'm just talking. <laughs> but I know what they're going to do. See, this is how the revival is going to expand and grow. It's going to grow through culture. It's going to grow through family, but it's also going to grow through these meetings like this too because this is part of it. You know why? Because the revival side of it is the impartation and activation. The, the Sunday part of it is the teaching. But we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get into the realm of the spirit. We gotta get into praise. We gotta get into extended praise. Cause here's the deal. I, I'm telling you that there's some places, man. I don't know if you ever been there. I preach all over the place. They do like 22 minutes of worship, and then they gotta give like every video announcement and all these things, and like talk about you know every group that has ever existed. And, I mean, like, and, and 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 you get to like that that 18 minutes, and you're like, oh, he's starting to come, and like, ladies and gentlemen. Like, not even skilled at transitioning. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just get up there. All right, everybody, sit down. You know, you're like, heaven is breaking into this place. <laughs> See, but that's why we do revival meetings. So that you can come be in worship for an hour and 20. Some people, they'd rather have the 20. <laughs> They're like, it's too long. Well, maybe you just need to stretch your capacity and fall in love with Jesus. And get hungry for what he can do. Huh. Ooh, it's like. Right over here, like this. Woo! <laughs> 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whew. There it is. I'll wait till tomorrow night. Tomorrow night's going to be fire. Don't miss tomorrow night. <laughs> you have no clue, but I do. <laughs> Whew. Jesus. Come on, just stand up, you guys. If you're hungry for Jesus, just come up here tonight. We're going to get into his presence, and I believe he's going to activate some things. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to get some lights up in this place. <laughs> anybody that way we'll put the lights down a little bit more come on put your hands out Father we love you we love you so much and we just thank you God that you've given us access to your kingdom You've given us access to your love, Lord. I thank you that heaven invades earth. I thank you, God, that heaven's help is available to us today. And that, Lord, even as we worship, heaven comes and worships with us. That, Lord, heaven invades earth in such a way when we're in these moments at the altar that, that literally it's the throne room floor and the church floor become one. And just like it says in the, the writings of David the psalmist, uh, that our praises and our worship enthrone God. He's enthroned upon our praises. See, if you want to get the throne room of God in your life, then be a, a man or a woman or a young man or a young woman of praise. See, I sit in my car sometimes and I just praise and praise and praise and praise. <laughs> and when you do that, it gets really, really oily. You know what's beautiful about doing it in the car? You don't even have to care what people think. You can sing as loud as you want. You know what I'm saying? You could, you could try to do a Michael Best, but you might screech. You know what I'm saying? You try to hit that top note. <laughs> It's like, 
but God loves it. See, that's how you start cultivating this thing. When nobody else is looking, when nobody's around but you and him, and you sing to him because you love him so much that you just don't care. See, I'm telling you, God says that tonight he's releasing a fresh anointing of heaven invading earth, that tonight he's going to activate heaven's help in our lives, that just like Nathaniel got a revelation of the fact that Jesus was king, and with that revelation, Jesus said, he said, Nathaniel, he said, listen, wait, you're going to see greater things than this. You're going to see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. He was saying, listen, I know you understand who Jacob was. You understand who Jacob was, Nathaniel, and, and you understand and open in heaven, but what you need to understand is that when I live in your life, that open heaven will become yours. Come on, somebody. See, God wants to open the heavens and He wants to cause the angelic realm to come to ascend and descend in your mess, in your home, in your living room, in your car. Come on, you, you ever think about the fact that the heavens are open over you? So when you're driving down the street, it's like an open heaven going up the highways. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you, you got to open heaven. It don't matter what kind of murderous spirit, perverse spirit. doesn't matter what kind of demonic thing. When you roll and come on, you are a mobile upper room. Where you go, come on, there's a fire that follows. There's an anointing that's blazing and, and, and being released. Woo, come on, just start to pray in the spirit and start to worship God tonight. Come on, do it like you love him. Do it like you mean it. Come on, go after him. He wants to bless you tonight, but we want to bless him because he's that good. Come on, just lift it up tonight. I want you to lift it up tonight like he's in the room because he is. Come on, just close your eyes and put your hands up. Come on, we decree that heaven is invading this place. We decree over the live stream right now, heaven invading earth into living rooms, into cars, uh, invading people's spaces. And Lord, tonight we invite you to come in unusual ways in this place. Oh, we exalt the name of Jesus in this room. 
We exalt the name of Jesus in this nation. We exalt the name of Jesus in Vista, California. And from this place, I thank you that there's a sound. There's a sound of revival that's going out even tonight in the realm of the spirit. Oh, we release an anointing of the angelic hosts of heaven going out on assignment. The angels that gather that, Lord, there would be souls that would come into the kingdom. So many souls in this place that we can't contain it. Lord, we thank you, God, right now that, Lord, even in our families, Lord, for those that are watching online, their cities, their states, their nations, God, their families in this place, Lord, We're asking that the angels that gather be released, Lord. That people that are addicted to drugs would be delivered. That people that are addicted to perversity would be delivered. That, Lord, a generation that's bound with this agenda and that thing, God, would be delivered. And, Lord, we thank you for revival. And we thank you, God, that, Lord, you're releasing a fresh anointing on our hearts tonight to know you more, to walk with you, and to talk with you. An open heaven, (laughs) an open heaven that wherever we go, you're there with us. (laughs) And even stronger when we go where you want to go. See, he's always with you, but when you go on assignment, so we should be praying, Lord, is there somewhere you want me to go today? Is there someone you want me to reach? Is there a a place? You know, you don't have to get legalistic with it, but, you know, I meet some people that get so crazy they can't even leave their house without asking if they can or what, what, what clothes they can wear and shoes and this and that. And you can do that too, but I'm just don't get bound by it. Get in the flesh. What I'm talking about, though, is going, Holy Spirit, is there an encounter today? And then all of a sudden you see that pizza spot and you're like, oh, okay. I like that spot anyway. I'm going to go. And guess what? A few extra angels go with you because you're being obedient to God. <laughs> Get there, revival breaks out. People dropping their slices. <clears throat> Come on. I'm being serious. See, because what I've learned is that when we hear the Lord's voice and he gives us assignments, he releases heaven to pull off the assignment. See, we can move in gifting. We can, we, and, and we should. But there's a momentum of developing an atmosphere of heaven in our lives, and it comes by radically being obedient to him, but also by talking with him. Because how many know God could have someone on his heart? Or he could have a place on his heart. And he's like... I just want someone to go to the pier today in Oceanside. He's like, checking with all sons, checking with all daughters. Well, they're all busy today, huh? Oh, wait. Oh, you're listening? Here, go over there. Then you go over there and someone gets raised from the dead. See, I'm prophesying. (laughs) Oh, we're going to suck souls out of Oceanside. I can tell you that. (laughs) They don't have to drive that far. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, just close your eyes. Yeah, Father, we just thank you right now. There he is. Lord, release God assignments to us. Release assignments to us. Come on, I'm telling you, God gave me <laughs> probably five months worth of messages during the, the worship. He wants to download to you messages, whether they're for preaching or not. That's not for me to say, but messages for people, messages for your family, messages. You know what messages are for you? They're prophetic words. Hearing God's voice. Come on, he wants to fill you with prophetic insight. Boom. He wants to fill you with prophetic knowledge. He wants heaven to invade your schools, your workplace, your industry. (laughs) 
I'll never forget, I was in a meeting one time for Charlie Robinson. He rented out this big church of 450 seats. And they gave him an astronomical bill. <laughs> and I remember they took all the offerings. And he was going to be in debt by like $50,000. And this prophet goes, the angel of the Lord is here. And he jumped up and he's, the angel that releases finances. And, every, and I don't know what got into them people. They went crazy. And they just like, the floodgates opened. They received $80,000. The building was paid for and he had money for his next conference. And I'll never forget that. I was like, how, what, how'd that happen? I mean, they already did all the stuff. And the Lord said, oh, when the angels come, there's a greater dimension of breakthrough. And I said, well, what was that? He said, treasure room angel. <laughs> Store up for sales, treasures in heaven. <laughs> treasures in heaven where rust and moth cannot steal or angels can't. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, I'm getting messed up. Store up for yourselves. <laughs> Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven <laughs> where rust and moths cannot destroy or thieves can steal from for where your heart is there your treasures are also come on put your hands up man it just got really saucy it's like kung pao dude Bow. Ooh, Lord, we just thank you. Stir up revival in our hearts. Stir up revival in our spirits, God. Lord, we want to know you more. We want to talk with you, walk with you, be with you, God. We thank you, Lord, that all depression and fear and shame and anxiety has to go because you are pouring out joy. You're pouring out love. You're pouring out life. You're pouring out favor, God. Heavenly solutions are being released right now. Amen. Yeah. Woo. Come on, just love on him. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love your presence. So won't you come like a flood? Oh, won't you come, Lord? Woo! Sing 
and be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Yeah. Oh, worthy is your name. We release the angelic beings of heaven. Lord, we thank you, God, for angels that release revival, God. Lord, we thank you that there's a holy stirring that's happening in this place this evening, God. And Lord, I thank you that out of this place, the angelic realm is being sent, God, on assignment from the heavenly dimension to glorify the name of Jesus. Lord, we decree over this state, God, over California, God. We decree over Southern California, over San Diego, Lord, over Vista, over uh, San Francisco, God, over Los Angeles, over Santa Barbara, Lord. We declare up the Central Coast, Lord, even into Bakersfield, Lord, and Modesto, God, that, Lord, you'd release revival fire, God, that, Lord, you would begin to uh, upend and remove, Lord, God, the darkness that is ruled and reigned in the land, God. We thank you that, Lord, you're going to raise up burning ones up and down the I-5 corridor. That, Lord, there's going to be a generation, Lord, that sees revival, that experiences your presence, that experiences your life, God. And, Lord, I thank you, God, that there is an angel on assignment being released in this place tonight over this nation, God. That, Lord, you're going to release the fear of the Lord into the churches, Lord. That you're going to release the fear of the Lord even over people's households, God. And that, Lord, Lord, you would cause that realm of the kingdom to overtake people. And Lord, we thank you for visitations in this place. That Lord, as we go, and we're not done yet, I'm just decreeing. That, that Lord, as we leave this place, Lord, that, that as we go, those watching and those that are here, that Lord, there's going to be a heightened atmosphere of the glory of God in our times of prayer and especially a heightened awareness of the angelic realm. Not that we would, we would pay too much attention to them more than Jesus. Come on, it's all about Jesus. But that we would be aware of what God is doing. Oh, Jesus. I see the seraphim angels tonight. Isaiah describes them in Isaiah 6. He said they had six wings. With two they flew. And with two they covered their, their eyes and their feet. 
in the presence of the king. And they took coals from the altar of God. And they touched Isaiah's lips. And he went from being aware of his humanity and being insecure to be in the presence of the Lord to having confidence that he could be used by God. See, when Isaiah had an encounter with the throne, he said, Woe am I, for I'm a man of unclean lips. Who am I to be in the presence of such a holy God? But see, God did for him what he could not do for himself. And he sent heaven's help to release deliverance into his heart. See, some people, they they act like we don't even need heaven's help. But what, what would happen if Isaiah didn't have that encounter with that seraphim angel? He wouldn't have had the confidence to become the prophet of the Lord that God had called him to be. Right? He heard the voice of the Lord. Who will go for me? Who will I send? But because of one encounter with God, the trajectory of his life radically changed. He went from some guy having an encounter to becoming the prophet of the Lord who would prophesy things that are fulfilled in the New Testament with Jesus. See, one encounter can change everything. The words of Isaiah are still coming to pass today. But religious people, we don't need that angel stuff. Well, what happened if he didn't get that angel stuff? You see how arrogant that is? Come on, just close your eyes and just... Lord, we say yes to anything you want to do. Lord, we're not picky. (laughs) Lord, we want what you want. Lord, we want to receive what you want to give. Lord, we thank you for the angels of heaven being released tonight, Lord, that, that God, there'd be days of visitation in our midst. That, Lord, we would enter in as a, as a body, God. That we'd enter into a season of encounters. Because we know that when we encounter your love, we're never the same. Everything changes. Everything shifts. So Holy Spirit, we're asking right now to come tonight and to encounter us with your fiery love. Come tonight, God, and and, and mark us with something special, Lord. I thank you that there's a, a fresh anointing that's being released, God. Oh, to see an army raised up in this place. To see an army raised up who will take back the ground that the devil has stolen. And they'll begin to give it to their God. (laughs) Come on, just receive right now. Just...
We join with the anthem. We join with the worship of the King. Oh, lift the sound, lift the sound, lift the sound, lift your voice. 
He responds to the frequency of your love. of the Father's heart for the Father's heart swells with joy for you He's madly in love with you There's nothing you can do Qualify yourself because of the blood. For the blood of Jesus makes a way. The blood of Jesus is the ancient pathway to the Father. Because Jesus is the door. Jesus is the gate. Because of the blood of the Lamb, we have access to come before the throne with boldness. Boldly, we come to your throne. Boldly, oh, we're coming to the throne. Tonight, Lord, we need you. So we step on into another dimension. We're stepping into heaven. We're stepping into heaven. Heaven on the earth. We're stepping into heaven. We're stepping into heaven. And the angels are crying, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the 
Threshing floor The place where the unquenchable fire Separates, separates, yeah He separates, he separates, yeah He separates, he separates All oh, the chaff from the wheat And everything that has no heavenly value, it burns with the fire. I hear the Lord saying that there's a people of harvest. There's a people of harvest. Oh, the rising of. Oh, you're going to reap harvests that you didn't even sow for, says the Lord. Oh, the heavy rain is coming now. The heavy rain is coming now. Oh, you weren't even around when the former rains were released. Oh, the heavy rain is coming now. Oh, the latter rain. Oh, the latter rain of the Father. Oh, the angels that gather are going now. Oh, the angels that gather are going now on the winds of the Spirit. The hedges and highways and byways. The hedges and highways and byways. The hedges and highways and byways shall be saved. Yeah, the hedges and byways and highways. Oh, the hedges and highways and byways, they shall be saved. Because I'm sending you out, I'm sending you out to the hedges, the byways and highways. To the hedges, the byways and highways. Oh, I'm sending you now with creative power being poured out. Oh, the hedges, the highways and byways. I'm anointing you oh, with prophetic insight. Oh, to reach the lost, the ones that nobody cares for, the ones that society has thrown away. Oh, you're going to reach up, says the Lord. Hedges, the highways and byways. Drip, drop, drip, drop, heavenly oil. Drip, drop, drip, drop, heavenly oil. It's coming now. It's being poured out. Yeah. 
heavenly perspective. Not to just see the crowds, but to see the world, but to see the world like the Father sees. Many people dream of the masses, the Father dreams of the world. The Father dreams of the one. Oh, He wants to send you, son. Oh, the Father dreams of the one. My daughter, will you go? Oh, the Father dreams of the world. I hear the Lord saying, go after the one. And I'll give you the masses, my sons, my daughters.
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the one who was and is and is to come. We join tonight with the holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the one who was and is and is to come. Father, we thank you that you are the one who was and is and is to come, that you are the faithful and true. Father, I thank you tonight that not a word goes out from your mouth that returns to you void, that you are faithful and true, and that we can trust you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you tonight for those online, Lord. Father, I thank you for the go of the gospel invading their homes right now, Lord God, that hope would be restored, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for your heart, that, Father, that we would know your heart and we would be quick to obedience to go that we would be quick to say those words to the person at the cashier. I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that in this season, all that has been poured into us, we would pour out to others. And we thank you, Lord. 
We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all that you're doing, and we thank you for all that you're going to do. That you would be magnified and glorified throughout the earth. We thank you, Lord. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Come and join us. Amen.